Are you present? Yes, I am. Hey, here we are, all here. And Lori, of course, Lori Smallwood is you present. Double, you get the double hand wave there. Oh, the double hand. I feel very privileged. There you go. Very good. So uh, with just one absence, we're good to go. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Yes, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Nobody wants to approve the minutes. Anyone? I'll move. Okay, Michael moves. Is there a second? Anybody want to Susan, you're Susan, you're muted. Or you can just do this. I know I'm muted. I didn't. Why do I have to second it? No. <laughs> it's your lucky night. It's your last meeting. You can do it. Okay, I second it. There we go. Quick All question. those in favor. Oh, sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All righty. So moving along. Way to go. We got the first uh, box ticked off. Tickle Creek Village. Sarah, would you like to introduce the topic for us? Uh, what about public comment? Oh. So we, we didn't have public comment period, and we have a public person here. I apologize for that. And Let's I don't do know that. for sure if she wants to stick around for the whole shebang. Lori, my... do you want, do you have public comment for us, Lori? Lori this Lori <laughs> yes 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 I do I looked at the um, the pesticide herbicide um, um, what you all did and it looks good in theory um, I don't when is that supposed to be implemented well from here from us it will go on to the City Council for adoption and then be implemented I would imagine within 30 days okay because I live close to Bornstead Park and um, only one entrance gets notification so far. So when I walk to Bornstead Park, I get the bad surprise that um, the um, herbicide application has been done. So, so people that are coming in from the different entrances don't know. So is does that mean every single entrance will be notified you know with, with Bornstead Park there's you have the, the entrance on the corner near the community garden I would assume would get notified there would be probably one down in the other corner opposite of that and then one hopefully near the traditionally there's been one near the playground that I've seen quite regularly when they have sprayed that's um, the only one I've ever seen Oops, yeah sorry, but yeah. the the corners i think are the important ones and down on the other corner the north east corner i would hope would have a notification also the little pathway that comes in right but uh, and in a perfect world um there wouldn't be application but i know we're not living in a per perfect world it's sandy uh, it's pretty darn close to perfect <laughs> that was good <laughs> but, yeah, because at Bornstead Park, if you're familiar with it, the herbicide application happens, the weeds pop back up, and then they put more herbicides on it, and the weeds pop back up. So I wish we could get people to go pull weed. I've done it occasionally, but pulling weeds probably is a better long-term solution herbicide over and over again. Yes. So, yeah. Anyway. What did she, she suggest so, just now? Pardon? What did, what did you just suggest instead of using herbicide? I, I mean, <clears throat> I'm oh, right there with no, you. Oh, the wheat, like you get people that many people don't have anything better to do, go pull some weeds, but um, that would take a community effort. So, um, anyway. Yeah. Well, like this so past year at, at the garden, we have been making, you know, gardeners have been trying to pull all the weeds around the outside edges and stuff to, and that, I think that that was noticeable. Doesn't anybody else think it was noticeable? There was fewer weeds out 
around the outside of the fence and in that little island there. I didn't, I didn't see it uh, personally, the difference. I mean, I, I didn't go there, but I I share your sentiment, Lori. I, uh, I, I think we're just trying to figure out what the most cost effective way is while keeping the community safe. Um, any alternatives that would be comparable in price and time, I'm sure would be gladly accepted, you know? Yeah, well, I would just think that it would probably take a volunteer effort, so um, with weed pulling, but I don't have the, the way to implement that plan myself. So anyway, thank you all for listening. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. And I apologize for skipping over the community comment part. <laughs> Susan's keeping you on track. <laughs> yes, she is. Somebody needs to. Okay, so let's go back to Tickle Creek then. Um, there was also changes to the agenda that we glossed over. Ah, I'm glossing over everything tonight. Do you have some changes that you'd like to suggest? Well, the only thing that I had kind of, I thought I sent an email and I, but maybe it, it was not timely, but I was in looking at the, um, for the Parks and Trails Master Plan, and I think we talked about this before, um, the discussion about where we put bathrooms and porta potties, um, kind of, I think we talked about that and did, and, and, did that kind of get forwarded to the uh, consultants, Sarah? So anyways, I'm sorry. I don't want to get into the subject, but that was the one thing. I just had wanted to see if we could just have a little wrap up on that discussion of uh, porta potties and toilets. Um, focusing, I guess, if anything, focusing in on the existing parks, not so much. I think we talked about it for future parks, but for existing parks going forward where we want toilets or porta potties is that something to talk about now or do you want to shuff, shuffle that off to next month no let's let's put sorry don i was going to suggest we put it at the end of the meeting yes that's what i was going to suggest also okay, very good okay so porta potty talk potty talk <laughs> okay what else am i glossing over i think that's it Okay, let's try that three times a charm. Well, let's try that uh, Tickle Creek topic again. Okay, so um, almost a year ago, the board reviewed this um, development, and Tracy's here again tonight, so he can give you more of an overview. Um, and at that time, the board had voted to recommend Fee and Lou, but there has been some development since then and uh, some discussion with um the city um about the property that is part of that which is the wetlands along reuben there so i'm gonna let tracy go ahead and take it from here before you toss it to tracy i have a question sarah okay. and, you know maybe sarah maybe tracy's the only one to answer this but the word document that you sent out appears mm -hmm. to be the final order from january is that right? Sorry, say that again, Kathleen. The, you sent out the final order in, uh, as a Word document. You, you sent three documents today. One of them is a note from Tracy. Another one, I think, is uh, you know another PDF. It's the uh, information from Tracy, the staff report, mm -hmm. and the final order. Yeah. And on, on the final order, what's confusing to me is we recommended a fee in lieu of mm -hmm. because there's existing park you know very close by and so what i'm confused at, about is without any kind of information to us all of a sudden this final order which i assume is it, it's dated january 28 2020 it kind of says um alternatively <laughs> You know, it says the Parks and Trails Advisory Board reviewed the proposal and voted to recommend a fee in lieu of parkland. And then, you know, blah, blah, woof, woof. And then it says, alternatively, the applicant shall submit an appraisal for the land 
in the restricted development area north to the proposed, you know, basically, you know, starts implying that, all, you know, the alternative is that we would be accepting um, the wetlands instead. And I'm confused about that. As am I. From what I understand, Kathleen, um, I, I included that document. It came from planning um, just as a means of background for sure. Um, and I don't think anything's been decided yet. Um, final order. That's a final order there. Okay. So that's where I'm confused about final orders kind of tell you what to do. It's not like we're still, you know, bouncing around alternatives there. Well, I'm not sure that, Tracy, can you weigh in here? Because I don't, it's not my understanding that anything has been agreed upon yet. Am I wrong about that? Well, yeah, I guess, um, I mean, Kathleen is right that it is the final order and the final order does give kind of two options in a sense. Um, you know, I, the second option I think was developed by the planning staff. Um, I think, and I, I think uh, in Sarah's kind of cover memo, uh, she mentioned that uh, there was some interest Carl. by Councillor Exner um, in looking at acquiring that pawn piece. So I think that it's my understanding. I wasn't really involved in this project that in too much detail, but that's my understanding how it evolved. It was kind of submitted and then um, you all weighed in. I never even saw your what you had said until just recently. Um, then the order was issued, and then it was kind of um, put on the table as, you know, considering options, I guess. Uh, okay, Lori Smallwood, has council taken any action on this? I don't, I don't recall off the top of my head this coming before council as far as like action, taking any action goes. And my, my understanding that no action has been taken. Yeah, uh -uh. So this, this is kind of the... So there's kind of two pieces to this. Um, the one piece is there's a condition in the final order that also talks about a trail. And this trail is supposed to connect from DeBarco Road to kind of come through the property and with a positive- I'm having trouble hearing, so give me a second okay. and I can help. Can, I, can everybody else hear me? Or, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, to connect over by sunset. And I can share a map of uh, with you showing kind of the property where this kind of proposed trail is and talk about it. It might be helpful to just look at that um, if, if you would like. I mean, sure. Yeah, okay. that's fine. I just, you know, I just was surprised to see that final order be so confusing and not following the recommendation that the parks board, I mean, from a, pro from a process standpoint, you know, going forward, we need to make sure that the recommendations we make go to the planners. They did. Know, verbatim, and, and then if they don't take that recommendation, you know, who made that decision? And then, you know, if that was the planning commission or whatever, whoever made the decision not to take our recommendation, at least please, you know, um, let us know what, what the thinking was and let us know what the alternative that was thrown out there and you know we can either you know i mean i would not we're again I'll also just advisory but we still want to know what the rationale for doing that was so it's just kind of a, a process issue for me when when we've got final orders that are not at all clear in my opinion and second of all don't go with what we recommended and like i said we don't have you don't have to go with what we recommended, but at least having some rationale for why you didn't, or letting us know the you know that that you didn't is helpful. So, okay, I'll, uh, Kathleen, I will. I'll talk to Kelly about that and make sure that we close that loop. Um, I do know that Carl has been very interested in this, and I I it, there may have been a council meeting, Lori, where it was discussed, but I I can't confirm that or not, but I will definitely work to close that loop. So once your recommendation goes that we get a follow-up, if it doesn't, you know, if it's going a different direction in particular, 
um, I will see if I can close that loop. It, it may have been a work session, Sarah. Yeah. It may have been a work session and I don't recall, I could, I mean, knowing Carl's background with water, I could see him, you know, inquiring about that, but yeah, we've made no decision. So I, Kathleen, yeah. I completely hear where you're coming from and that makes perfect sense to me. So yeah, maybe some further investigation on what, what's, what's transpired for sure. Well, and I, I guess one question would come up as, as an advisory board, are we advisory only to council or are we advisory to council and planning commission or are we advisory, advisory to, to city staff along with council? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really having trouble with my audio. Don, can you ask that again, please? I said the, the, one of the questions I had is, is are we advisory to only council or are we advisory to uh, planning staff and park staff also? Well, I would think all of that, but ultimately I think it's important that council and the planning commission hear your recommendations and they, they do get included in those packets. Sometimes those packets are big, yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, they go to council, they go to the planning commission, um, staff sees them as well, but you're, you're advising council and the planning commission primarily. Well, that's what I would, that's the assumption I was making. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would hope that our uh, message gets passed along from planning staff up to planning commission. I am more than certain that you're passing along <laughs> information to uh, the council staff people to make sure that it gets included in theirs. And I'm certain it has. Okay. And I do know in this case that, um, you know, the planning department was very aware, aware of your recommendation, but I think they were also getting a lot of input from council, particularly Carl. I don't want to say the council as a whole, but from Carl. Um, so they were, I'm sure, weighing all of that information. Well, a single councilman is nothing more than a citizen. They right. have no authority more or less than anybody else that lives within the city. So if Fair it's just a single council person that's swaying this, then that uh, outside of the confines of an open public meeting, then that's just not appropriate. Uh, but we won't necessarily. And I don't, I don't want to suggest it was outside of that, Don, right. that was, you know, be, but Lori's not recalling for sure, but I can follow up and find out. But I don't think it was outside of the. Um, I think the real the real question for us tonight, though, is is do we want to modify our recommendation? Right. Um, yeah, I, <coughs> I believe this development went to City Council because I think it just no, went it to the Planning Commission. But yeah, I'll just clarify: it didn't even go to the Planning Commission. It's a Type Two review, so it only was reviewed by the <laughs> director. It was the director's decision. So. My, I guess, as you were talking about what is your role, I mean, it's not my place at all, but I would articulate it as everything park related that, you know, affects the city. And so that's director's decision, planning commission's decisions or councils. So it is broader than just, so your input that you provided, you know, I didn't see it until just recently, but was part of the, you know, file, just like the uh, public works, directors and the city engineers, you know, input in terms of a development. You know, I can't say what happened behind the scenes and talking to Carl, I don't really know anything about that. But so if, if you wouldn't mind, I can just share a, my screen and show you kind of what's going on a little bit. Um, sure. I, I'm, is everybody okay with that? Yes. That's great. Thank you so much, Tracy, for helping explain all that. Yeah. So Sarah, you'll need to kind of enable me to share my screen again. Okay, while Sarah's doing that, I think Makoto had a question. Yes, the uh, water feature there, it's like a little pond. I noticed that it gets backed up and then there's like logs that get, they have to loosen it up or something. What's the water source that's feeding it? Is it runoff from the industrial yards or the main highway up there? No, and it's uh, it's no name. It's basically no name creek. You know that creek that goes through Minick Park. You know it's probably a combination of some groundwater and you know runoff, but it's it's a it's a uh, perennial 
stream that feeds that. And so once it exits that pond there on the east side of Reuben, it goes under Reuben Lane and there's the pond behind the existing condos. And then it kind of makes, a, goes under DeBarco Road and goes into Tickle Creek, kind of right there at the west end of those apartments. Um, but what feeds it? It's a, it's a, it's a perennial stream. It's a, you know, it's a groundwater springs runoff from the street. Um, you know, it's kind of like Tickle Creek. What feeds that? It's just upstream, you know, yep. springs. And what I have seen a salmon in it years ago when it basically, oh. uh, you know, DeBarco Road was flooded and we saw salmon in DeBarco Road right by those condos kind of going upstream of DeBarco Road. But And Makeda, there, there's an occasional beaver in there as well. Yeah, yeah I, I've heard that. Yeah. Yep. yep. So you still need to unlock me, Sarah, from sharing. Oh, I was just uh, walking by there today and it definitely looks like Beaver Dam right as you're walking on Reuben, you know, on the east side of Reuben Road and you look down there. I mean, it's, and there's docks in the water and there's a lot of nice things about it. Some of the Beaver Dam every so many years just because uh, otherwise the water would be running across the road. So they go in there and um, do yeah, that. Hello. Okay, there some we it, go. Some of it's human work, but there's an occasional critter in there. <clears throat> Wait a minute, yeah. And an occasional car. But can you see my screen there? I can see you on your screen. Okay, well, I guess it, okay, let's see. I need to do something else here. Okay, um, just a second here. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? How, what, I mean, how did the car end up in there? Just going too fast and sliding across the road and... Uh, Reuben Lane gets very icy uh, in the wintertime. Very, very icy, so... Mm -hmm. But there, it looks like there's like a homeless encampment. Um, there is. Down in there. there. And there's a lot of trash built yep. up and stuff. But anyway, there's okay. actually two. There's two in there, oh, and I brought right. them up Monday night at uh, City Council. So, hmm. wow. And this isn't, you know, a couple years ago it was really bad, and a bunch of community folks got in there and cleaned it all out. Um, but that is an issue with, you know, the homeowner or the landowner not having it well posted for no trespassing. So when, when when I I just did something on my screen, can you see my kind of files there? No, I just still see still, you. Still see me. Uh, let's see here. I don't know. I'm having trouble doing this here. So many different meeting platforms. We almost you almost need a class on every single one. Yeah, I mean I've never had problems with this before for some reason, but I don't know. I if I did something. I I have these. I had these things up and I minimized them onto my desktop and now I, they're not, they're kind of behind the screen, I think. <laughs> Let's see. Let me share that. Hmm. Let's see, share screen. Tracy, worst case, you could email it to me and I can try and share it. Oh, there you go. There we go. We've got it. We've got oh, it. Oh, you can see that? Okay. Yep. All right. It's sideways, but we've got it. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I put, I, actually, I put it sideways because north is up here. And to me, it's easier to look at it if north is pointing up rather than it would be to the side. So, you know, here's Dubar or Reuben Lane going up the hill there. Those other existing condos are right across the street. Um, so the concept is, I mean, this is all approved, keep in mind. This is a uh, condo project. 
here. Um, and so the final order asks that a trail be put in kind of basically like that to connect from Dubarco through the property to where Sunset is. And Sunset Street, as you may know, it, it kind of dead ends and then it turns up the hill. And you know this is kind of the end of the extension of Sunset, which would never go through because basically to make it go through, you'd be barreling through this drainage way. Um, and so there is, a, but there is an existing right of way that extends to the east that would connect to Sunset Street. So here you can kind of see the, they delineated the wetland and you can see that here. Um, so there is some property north of the wetland um and uh the wetland boundary gets pretty close to the um development these are the uh condo units right here they're outside the setback but they're this is a little bit different picture of it without the aerial are they a little cleaner looking um so there's kind of two different things one is this trail and uh you know this trail is I guess uh, you know it's been a it's a request by the staff and it's in the final order. Um, the owner doesn't have a problem with providing an easement for this trail, but you know as things go, he doesn't want to do that unless there's some level of compensation because this is otherwise it's a taking of his property. The other part of it is he would like to, if possible. Um, and there seemed to be some interest by at least one counselor to acquire the rest of this property and the wetland for, you know, maybe having a boardwalk or a trail around it or something like that. Um, so that's kind of what, you know, I kind of laid that out in my little memo as to what he's kind of looking at. You know, he's hoping to get some compensation for this. And if there's interest by the city in, um, you know, we haven't had a, he hasn't had an appraisal done. I advised him that I thought it would, it was premature to have an appraisal because he was saying that the appraisal is probably gonna be two or $3,000. And why would you spend that money unless there's some interest in, compensating you because that's just money down the drain kind of thing. So he is, uh, you know, he's, he hasn't really, except for this mapping that shows where the trail would be or could, you know, could be, I guess, and the wetland and the property boundary. That's kind of as far as he's done at this point in terms of determining what would be the value of this property. So, I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't know if there's questions about that. Um, I'll try to answer them. Well, once again, from what I'm seeing and, and hearing, it really comes down to a question of, do we want to change or modify our recommendations at all? And personally, I kind of don't. I kind of think we made the right decision originally. And that uh, it, I, I just don't see it. If the I realize that that uh, you know for the developer, he, I certainly get that he wants compensation for these things. Um, I don't necessarily, you know. And again, I'm not sure what the requirement was of putting the trail in. If that was meant to be an amenity for the for the future property owners there, or you know the condo owners, or if that was meant to be a public space. If it was meant to be a public space then I, I'm fine accepting that as a, a contribution. Um, as far as the taking on um, the liability of the property uh, adjacent to it, the pond area, you know, I think we have enough maintenance liabilities for our capabilities already. And I just don't see that as a, an area that I would uh, see as having a huge benefit. I don't disagree with the, the vision of wetlands and and trails and boardwalks and things i i think they're very nice in fact i visited one recently out in 
Um, the North Clackamas Park and Rec District just recently opened one that was very, very nice. Um, I also know that that uh, they're you know expensive and sometimes more difficult to deal with them than meets the eye. And I don't know what our long-term capabilities are going to be of being able to maintain these facilities. So I, I at this point, you know, unless other people feel strongly about it, I, I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at. But that's just my opinion. How does everybody else feel? Susan, do you have an opinion? Well, I'm concerned about what will happen with the wetland. It's not clear to me who's taking care of it or who's protecting it or, you know, I noticed, I mean, I know the, the industrial park from the east side is always doing weird things on the other side there. <laughs> I don't know how much of that drains into the wetland or what, you know, but I, um, and I certainly think a trail would, would be, would be the good thing to have on that edge. Yeah, and I'm all for a trail. I just, and, I, and you know, I'd be more than happy to accept it as a donation, but I'm I guess just trying to be a little pragmatic about it. Keep in mind that, you know, that the, the, it's not a, I guess the developer is willing to do it. Um, it's not something he's excited about having the public coming along his property. And that's part of the reason he would like to keep the trails private, but provide an easement. But my guess is if he doesn't get something out of it, he's just gonna, there's gonna be no trail. Yeah. Because yeah. why would he do it? It's not a, you know, he could put a little private trail, but to be a public trail, you know, he's concerned that, you know, as it was mentioned, homeless people or whatever, anybody could be just looking at that as an opportunity to come through the, your backyard, basically. But, yeah. Uh, Kathleen, what's your feeling? And if do you recall if we have any, is any of this even recognized in the, in the current master plan, not the, the upcoming one, but the, the current master plan? Um, you have to give me a minute. I'm just loading my files for that. That's where I was looking. Um, and then I'm going to back it up a little bit. So Tracy, this is, this is getting developed under existing zoning. Yeah. Is that, and, and the zoning is like what, medium or high? R2 I or R2? It's, uh, I think it's R2. Okay. And so. Sure. I think it actually, the property kind of is split zone. I'd have to re look at the map. Uh -huh. Part of it is. One is either R2 or R3, and the other part is either R2 or R3. But there uh -huh. is a split zone for some reason. What's R2 and R3? What's the definition? Uh, medium density versus high density residential. Thanks. And, um, and so then my um, question then is, you know, sometimes there's, you know, and I don't recall, you know, I know the code somewhat, but um, is it, that there's some sort of requirement in the code for some sort of improvement like that um, for this trail? Yeah. Well, there is a requirement that, you know, so this is, although he, he will plat this as a condo project, it's essentially reviewed as an apartment complex, even though they're kind of separate units in a sense. Um, but so mm -hmm. there is a requirement for, for apartments to have what is called common outdoor area as an amenity for the residents. You know, there's also a requirement to have, you know, your private outdoor area or space and common outdoor area. So in the middle of it, he's got, you know, a grass area. And I think they're, I think on the detailed plans, there's like a little tot lot or something over here. And then the trail, you know, he could do a trail on his own. This area will become, you know, probably part of the development. And we, we counted some of it to provide credit for that requirement to have outdoor area, you know, the, the acreage or the square footage. So I think it's something like 200 square feet per unit is required of 
um, common outdoor space in a <coughs> uh, apartment complex. Mm -hmm. That answer your question, Kathleen. Yeah, and so you know, I, I recall there's a tot lot usually required or something, and and so I was wondering if, and so it, it sounds like there's some open space required, and so then the question is whether or not this trail is. Um, is the open space required to be dedicated or not? No, it's private. It's just yeah. part of the amenity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's kind of, so, you know, it's kind of built into the code. So the apartment complexes aren't just this concrete and that's it. You know, there's a little bit of green space somebody could go to as part of an amenity for the complex. But it's not intended to be public space. It's private for the tenants or residents in this case, or owners of the complex. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I kind of agree with uh, uh, with Don on the whole uh, wetland land acquisition. I think that you know we intentionally decided not to do. <laughs> Uh, acquire this land as a park or even as open space because um, I feel pretty confident that there's, you know, it's been, while well, we've got some homeless on there and that's, you know, a bit of an issue of where they are, but I, I think you're developing the part where the homeless are, but the rest of it, I think, I feel pretty confident that it's going to continue to serve as wetlands with duck habitat and, you know, an occasional beaver and all that. Um, so I agree that we don't, I, I wouldn't think it's in our best interest to acquire that land. Um, and it'll continue to be protected under our existing flood slope hazard zone. Um, regarding the trail, I think I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what the, you know, it's an interesting concept. So, but I'm trying to kind of get, does that link up with then the sunset, the end of Sunset Street? Is that the yeah. link? And is it the link that's kind of to the upper right of the trail? The, it's right down here. Down there. Okay. Can you see my hand? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we were to pull up a, a kind of a, a aerial of, you know, this is so close in, we can't really see the context of it. I don't know if this doesn't either, but yeah. it's, it's kind of right down through here. And that's why the, you know, it's shown this way. Yeah. Well, I think, um, well, well, what we do have, um, folks, is a tra is kind of a trail connector that goes between Sandy Heights and. Um, hey, Tracy, can you just bring up like Google, you know, Google Maps or something on your screen? Yeah, I can try. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I should be able to do that. Are you still seeing my screen there? Yes. Okay. I'll just pull up this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you can, let's see, you can kind of see it right here. Yeah, kind of zoom in over there where your parcel is and just go to the, uh, zoom out a little bit and go to the south a little bit, include like over by Sandy Heights. Yeah, let me just show the where Sunset is here real quick. So you see, so this is, this is kind of the right, here's Sunset, it ends and turns up the hill on Tal Drive or Toll Drive. And this is essentially the, the unimproved right away that will never get improved. And so the area we're talking about is right over here on, you know, the subject property, I guess, well, where that trail that might be. What's that? Who owns the right of way? City. The city owns that right of way that was. Public right of way, okay. yeah. Okay. You know, it's, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's like a 50 foot wide right of way mm -hmm. in here. All right. And it, it just, if you can imagine the sunset, just being extended this way to about this point, 
right. and it touches this property. Okay. All right. And so then zooming just out slightly, um, where Sandy, where's Sandy Heights there? Oh, I see. Okay, so what we do have proposed is between Bluff, see that big um, green space in the middle between Bluff and Sandy Heights? This one? I thought there would be a trail right through here, wouldn't there be? I'm well, no. Uh, <laughs> that's where, that's where no, Susan that's lives. No, that's where Susan lives. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> see, see that green ribbon that's south of the mobile home park? Here? Yeah. There's a trail, uh, you know, proposed on the on the future uh, parks and trails master plan between Bluff and going over to Sandy Heights. Okay. And, um, you know, just as kind of a linkage to kind of get people so they don't have to go all the way down, but DeBarco to get over to um, the trail. You know, so they don't through what was the public workshop. Yeah, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's on the south, southern boundary. And then remember, we own that little parcel to the um, right. Yeah, okay, right here. Right. And so, so that linkage there between is that that's Sandy Heights there and then yes. to Bluff. Yeah. So we, you know, so basically kind of creating kind of here. a link there. Um, and yeah, you could take it to the north there through the public workshop too, I guess. But, but that's where, um, you know, and, and gosh, you know, if you had, if you if you then had that link to the north on sunset going to the side, that's you know what I'm saying is I guess long story longer is the um, you know the trail. I don't have a big objection to seeing a trail easement put in there, um, providing access. You know again since we already have the easement on sunset, you know getting people down to Tickle Creek Trail, you know in that seems like a great opportunity to get them onto the trail without having to take them all the way down um, bluff or I don't think, I mean, let's see, there's, so, there's something further down there connecting to the trail, but it's quite a bit further south is my point. Um, so yeah, getting them kind of over to the middle of the trail there by Reuben Lane um, seems like a good opportunity. So I guess I could go along with the trail easement part of the whole thing. How how far does the city easement on Sunset go towards? Does it line the whole northern border of the existing trailer park and below the proposed development? No, it ends about right in here. I mean, I can probably let's see here. I'm gonna go um, look at something else here. Probably shows on a Google. Map. Yeah, I don't have the uh, property lines, unfortunately. So what I was going to do is just pull up the zoning map, and yeah. it'll show on that. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Oh, it shows up also on Google Maps uh, under the real photo version. Yeah, you can see it right here. Uh, so here's Sunset Street, that's improved. Here's the right of way that's unimproved. Can you see that everybody? Yeah. yeah. And here's where it, the street, the Prue Street goes up the hill, Toll Drive. And this is the property uh, right here. So it's, this is the Southern border of the property. And then it, it's basically this. So you can see the, Southern half is R3 and the Northern half is R2, the median density. I knew it was in there somewhere. But he doesn't own the Northern property, right? No, he owns the whole thing. Oh. Wow. He owns basically from this line and up to here. So you said that he wanted to build a trail if he could obtain that property around the lake or the whatever pond. No, no. I, Maybe it's misunderstanding. I mean, he's he would like to. So there's, he would like to sell the sell it or you know get, be compensated in exchange for his parks fee in lieu of to uh, turn it over to the city so the city could build a trail. Oh. And the 
final order talks to about building this trail, but again, you know, as I mentioned, he does he's not very excited about that as a public trail, especially um, without some kind of a compensation. I mean, there's a lot of loss, law cases about, you know, taking a property without compensation. So he would, if there isn't, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I can't speak for him exactly, but what he said is, you know, if he doesn't get some level of compensation, there's, there won't be a public trail. It might be private, but won't be public. That is unless planning commission decides to, to require a public access easement, isn't it? Well, the final order says that, but um, I can guarantee you that the, an attorney will say, no city, you can't do that <laughs> because you can't. Um, and it, so it, yeah, it is, a, it is a condition that could not be required because it's not legal. There's a court case, Dolan, I've never heard of the Dolan case, but it's a very famous case in Oregon, Supreme Court case. And, that basically it was kind of almost a similar thing. City of Tualatin wanted to put a trail in behind this guy's property and it ended up coming down to the Supreme Court that you no, know, you can't do it without compensation because it's a taking of his property. Okay. I mean, he, he's really wanting to work with the city about it. Um, so I don't know, that's just, and and is he realistically expecting to because from what i see in the final order we would be subject to receive a, a fee in lieu of 139,780 is that what i'm reading correct yeah that's the amount calculated based on the number of units right so is he proposing that he give us that trail and the rest of that property that pond basically undevelopable property for $139,000 well, that's where, you know, he would, I guess my answer would be sure he would like that. Um, you know, it would, have, it would be based on some sort of an appraisal probably. Yeah. To be, so the amount to be determined, but, you know, I didn't, uh, I advised him there's no point in having an appraisal if once you spend that couple grand to get it, the city says, no, we don't want that, you know. So it, it was kind of more of a thing of, you know, if there seems to be interest and, you know, my guess is it's not gonna, it's not going to give him just, you know, what I know about land values and probably the value of that property. My guess is it's not going to be $139,000. It'll be less than that. But I don't know exactly, but. I would make that same assumption. I just didn't know what his thinking was. No, I mean, he's, he's kind of wanting, you know, as was noted, it doesn't have a lot of um, value to him, except, you know, it is an amenity for his per people buying that to look over and not, you know, a wetland area, but from a, I guess, a recreational perspective, it probably has more value to the public to enjoy, you know, or could have value to the public. So that's what he's kind of looking at. I could see getting a, a credit on the uh, fee in lieu of for the trail easement, you know, for a 10 foot trail easement for that distance that's um, connecting Sunset to Ruben there. Um, and then, and then, if he wants to also go ahead and build it, I wouldn't. I would nix the wood chips. Wood chips just get all wet and soggy in the winter time, and so I would, you know, consider a packed gravel trail similar to Tickle Creek, um, you know, four to six feet wide or something. That um, and and then provide him a, a a fee in lieu of for the system development charges for constructing that as part of his condo construction project. I mean, that's, that would seem like a benefit to the city to then be able to connect the sunset. You might even want to, you know, consider asking him to not to, you know, continue the trail on that undeveloped easement on to sunset that 
that is sunset. Um, so you've got that link. Uh, that's a, yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, it would be, you know, offsite kind of improvement, but you know, these it's kind of like the you know if, if he's compensated for that. Right. I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly. I can't speak for him on that. We've ever, never really talked about it. Um, but yeah, so let me go back to those plans if I can find them again. There we go. Do you know how long that trail is? Do you have any uh, idea? Not, I'm not really sure. You know, and, and the, this exact location you know so in the in the final order it kind of talks about you know providing a cost estimate for the trail and again i advised them it's really kind of premature to figure that out because um you know i guess for two reasons one is you know if the city's not interested then why hire an engineer to figure out the cost but the reality is there's this whole area is full of trees and I didn't we don't have the tree layer here but so the location of the trail is going to be kind of you know meander around this is a concept you know it, it makes sense to kind of do it feel locate the trail and then figure out you know exactly how long that is and that kind of thing um, rather than just put a put a line on a map and say well that's going to be you know 20 grand or whatever you know the I guess the wood chips versus the gravel I mean his comment would probably be because I've heard him say this is he's going to have a lot of wood chips already on the site because there's a ton of trees um, I you know if he's if he's compensated for putting gravel I don't my sense he wouldn't have a problem for with that um, I, mean, I, I can guarantee you the maintenance on the gravel will be far less than what it will be on the wood chip. Right. You know, he, he is proposing it at this time as a, as private property, but in providing an easement. And so with that, he would be maintaining it. You know, and he and I've talked quite a bit about the pros and cons of doing that versus dedicating it to the city and he's kind of insistent on wanting to have provide an easement if he's compensated but still maintain the ownership of the property well i kind of just uh estimate it you know on google earth to, and it's about 800 to 1000 feet for for that trail not including the little connector things from your apartments uh -huh. but um, and then another, you know, and then it totals about 13 to 1400 feet if it's go, taking in the sunset uh, east uh, right away. Uh huh. Yeah, and I think the final order also talk, said something about a bent, couple of benches or something like that in there. That'd be another kind of amenity. Um, that. That one will be a little bit tricky um, because it talks about the benches outside the restricted area. So that needs to be kind of worked out where those would go because, um, you can see the restricted area, I don't think she goes up on here. But um, there's not a, that much room between, so the restricted area is basically 25 feet Maybe this is the restricted area. I don't know if it's that correct, but um, there's not a lot of room outside the restricted area on the property. But uh, I mean, that's, that's kind of a detail that could be figured out later. Well, I'd make a motion that we um, consider uh, getting an easement for, for the trail alignment over to uh, sunset, just for that part, not for these other little connector things. Skip the benches and off, and consider uh, reimbursing them for development of a four-foot pack gravel trail through there on that easement, going all the way to sunset. Um, 
as a credit for system development charges and a credit for the easement part of it to towards his uh, $139,000 fee in lieu of. That's, I'd throw that motion out there. All righty. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second that. Okay. And any discussion regarding that motion? Hmm. Did you just estimate the cost of that? No. Uh, no, she estimated the length of that. Yeah. But just, you know, ballparked it. I'm comfortable with that. Not seeing any questions. What, what kind of liability does the city take on with an easement like that? Or does it? Very little. Retain to the private owner then? No, as long as there's no fee associated with that, that would fall under the state's recreational immunity laws. In other words, if somebody goes out there and hurts themselves on it, uh, given a, unless we know of a, an advance of a condition that, that would cause injury, we so wouldn't be liable for it. It's kind of a win-win then for the developer and the city in a way, because be, yeah. unless that neighborhood's fully fenced off and enclosed, then community members besides those living in those residences might find their way onto their trail otherwise. I think it and also have, yeah, it also helps keep the homeless down. You know, when you have eyes on the you know, trail, people, you know, like on Tickle Creek, when somebody tries to set up camp on Tickle Creek, it doesn't take too long for them to get rousted out because it's, you know, eyes on the prize yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, there will be patios kind of looking out that way. I'm sure that will be eyes on the pond and patio or a pond and trail. So yeah, the width of the easement would, will need to be figured out. I mean, that kind of, those details and, you know, does it just include the trail itself or a little bit, you know, wider? It typically would be a little bit wider than just a, the trail, but. I, I would assume it would need to be a little bit wider than the trail itself. Yeah, usually yeah. 10 to 12 feet and then we aim for like a four to, I mean, Tickle Creek was six feet. We probably don't need it that big, but at least four foot with, uh, with clearing, clearing, brushing on either side. So yeah, 10 to 12 foot easement would probably be right. something to go off of. Yeah, so in, just to keep in mind, you know, in that restricted area where the trail will be, trails are permitted use um, and removal of non-native vegetation are permitted. That's why it's allowed to be there. That's just kind of more of an FYI than anything else. Um, you know, so that's kind of, and it, you know, it, it not only goes from point A to point B, but it is, you know, kind of along the edge of the pond. So it could be kind of a scenic, you know, way to go. So I think it's kind of a nice path for it, we'll say. Would some of the trees along the path be kept or would it just be clear cut? No, it won't be clear cut. There's no, you can't remove any of the trees within the restricted area. You know, I guess that, that, as I said, that'll be the kind of the fine line of how does the trail meander and, you know, bend and curve. And, you know, you kind of want to keep it moving forward, obviously, but you don't want to bulldoze through trees if you can avoid it. And, you know, root balls and things like that. They'll just have to be kind of, there's a lot, currently there's a, you know, I visited the site or I tried to visit the site and it's an absolute blackberry patch all the way to the pond and so once that stuff's cleared out then we can get a better handle on where are the real trees and what makes sense for designing the path along there and you know the, when, when the way it's written is we would just work with the city in terms of you know kind of coming up with that alignment i'd imagine you know we'd walk with the city planners or whoever and figure out and then stake it and to kind of figure out a little more details as we go along. Yeah, I think it's a one-win. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, we have a motion on the table with a second. Any more discussion before we vote? Just to be clear, uh, we're not taking the pond, right? That's my understanding. Is that correct, uh, Kathleen? Kathleen, do you mind restating your motion? Just. 
before the vote? Sure. Um, I make a motion that we um, consider an easement, um, a 10 to 12 foot easement along the trail as outlined on Tracy's graphic, um, connecting Sunset to, what is that, DeBarco? Mm -hmm. And um, providing the developer a fee in lieu of credit for that easement and also allowing um, the developer to uh, uh, get system development charge credits for constructing it as a packed gravel trail for a four foot wide packed gravel trail. Okay. And also, add, and, and, and if he's interested in extending that packed gravel trail um, to um, sunset, the sunset, right, existing sunset right away that we have. Okay. And it connects sunset to Ruben, not to Barco. No, it would actually be to uh, DeBarco. Um, oh, is it to DeBarco? But yeah, I can uh, let's see what I do with that thing. I'll show you the map if I, I think I closed it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually it's right, it, uh, there's, a, there's a little triangle, you can probably see it on this map here, um, maybe. There's a little triangle of property between, it would actually be nice to do it to Ruben in some ways. But there's a little triangle piece of property right there. So this is his property here. This is where the, the we're trail would go, kind of like this. Wait, Tracy, you have to share a screen. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you send us that graphic that you had of the development with the trail, please? Yeah, I think I sent it to. You to have Sarah. it, Kathleen. You have it. I do. Okay. Should be in your packet. Oh, this shows it pretty well, actually. Are you, am oh, I screen okay. sharing? Yes. So this is this is a so there's a see this little oh, triangular yeah. wedge of property here. Yeah. Um, that is owned by the owner. I think that owns on the other side of the creek from the condos. You know, up just up Reuben there, um, and it. I don't know. There's really nothing that can be done with it, and I'm surprised he hasn't just donate it to the city because it's paying taxes on that little wedge and there's nothing that can be done with it. But, so that's why the trail curves down like this and it would be actually a better trail if it could go more like this, um, just because this is getting a little steeper coming down this hill, we'll say. But, you know, we, anyway, I don't know. That's just kind of what it, where it's at. Hey, Tracy, um, uh, the map that you sent to be included in the packet looks different. This graphic you're showing yeah. is more detailed. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you again. I thought I sent you these. So these were prepared, um, let's see, I can maybe last, or no, early this week, I think. I might have sent them to you early this week. Yeah, the one I sent with my memo is just more of just an aerial but there's two other maps, but I'll just send those to you again. Okay, and I'll send it back out. All right. Hey, so don't mean to be a, a pest on this one, but we still have a motion on the table. Yep. Uh, any other comments or questions? I do not see any. Let's go ahead and move to the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? I see no opposed. Motion carries. Good job. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, so I'll pass that on to the developer. And so it sounds like uh, Sarah will be kind of forwarding on that to the council. And I don't know. So Kathleen may be uh, seeing this again on the council seat, and Lori will be seeing it at some point i don't know when it you know it's, it'll be kind of up to the uh i think the planning director to move it forward I, that's what we've at least talked about you know i'd ask i'd ask kelly to, if he could be here because he has more intimate knowledge in this and his it's his one of his son's birthday and it was just not convenient to attend so 
that's okay. You know, I said, that's fine. And so there it goes. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Hey, Tracy, I want to thank you very much for coming out this evening. Yeah. Really appreciate okay. your time. Thank you. All right. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. All right. See you later. All right. Bye bye. Right. Good night. Good night. Okay, let's move along then. Item 7.1, master plan update. What can you tell us, uh, Sarah, about this? Well, I was gonna shoot that back to TAC members, um, what you heard at the meeting. Okay. <laughs> Kathleen, share well, with us what- I was gonna say, uh, Sarah, you might wanna just mention this latest little trail addition to the um, ESA. Make a I note the um, planning has already been in touch with them about that trail possibility. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, following up on the um, <laughs> meeting the other day, uh, we got schooled in um, SDCs, park SDCs. Um, it was a lot of information and Basically, what we were trying to look at is kind of our level of service that we are providing and how do we ensure that we're able to use um, kind of our, our, you know, some, somewhat of our goal is to, uh, you know, use as much SDCs as possible to, ac to achieve our objectives for park development. Um, and so that kind of gets us down to what, you know, kind of the, a lot of it is how you make the sausage type discussion, which I won't bore you with here because I only understood about half of it. But um, it just has to do with the, the level of service. You know, basically we have a, a big surplus of natural and open space lands. We have um, a, sur a slight surplus of, is it, tell me if I've got this wrong, Don, tot lots? That's correct. And we have a slight surplus of tot lots, although we do have, you know, an identified need for a couple more in the future, but I think uh, I think we're pretty good on that lot. And then, then where we're defi deficient is on neighborhood parks. And that's where our major focus is, um, to some extent also on sports fields. Um, so those kind of things are, are where we're going to be focusing um, proposals. And, you know, a lot of that stuff ends up being developer driven, you know, where do, where do they want to develop in the city and where do we have these identified parks? So, so they basically identified kind of based on somewhat on, on what we initially did and, you know, is basically identifying conceptual locations for future neighborhood parks spread out with, you know, half a mile distances between the, the parks so that people can conceivably walk to the parks. Um, and then there's also the trail system, um, and they, that's that's pretty well developed. We're just in the process of kind of, uh, they're trying to kind of get us, they said they're trying to kind of get some more information on the proposed trails, um, but we will, um, and we'll get them that. Was there any other information that I missed, Sarah? Yeah, I was thinking about the survey, right. and, um, you know, a lot of the things that came back were uh, repeated patterns from previous public outreach. So things like skate parks, pump tracks, um, you know, people did bring up the pool, although it was a little bit outside the purview of that survey. Um, and there was what, it, jump in, Don, Kathleen, the other, um, as far as, other things that came out of the survey. I don't have it in front of me. I wish I did. I could pull it up. Yeah, they, they commented on the community campus. They liked the park, the pump track. They liked the skate park. Um, I, I'm trying to remember or recall any additional specific comments on like the Champion Way Park or the Ponder Lane or the um, Deer Point Park. Yeah, you know, how about if I take and I send the summary out to the board and send that wonderful. summary because there's there is a lot of detail and there is some specific feedback on those parks, what people liked, what they didn't like. Um, you know, so I can I don't see any reason why I couldn't send out that summary. 
I do know that, you know, we, we did chat about the Ponder Lane dog park and the fact that we don't have any park identified parking for that mm. park at all. I um, mean, there isn't going to be allowed any street parking along uh, Gunderson Road there. You're not allowed to have park street side parking on that kind of a road, I guess. And so the, you know, that's a real showstopper there to not have parking at a dog park because all those people in Cascadia and Bornstead are going to drive over across the highway yeah. um, to, you know, take their dog for a walk and they're going to need a place to park. So we're going to have to figure out some sort of a uh, parking options over there. And yeah, we talked, we talked about where that might be. Well, and you brought up another uh, possible site for a dog park at our last meeting too. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be at Ponder Lane. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, some of, some of that stuff is so off, far off in the future. You know, I think there's enough demand in this town to, you know, there's people are kind of, you know, with collecting all the money that we have for the different, you know, for the um, bark for the parks and things like that. I think people are, you know, pretty excited about getting a second dog park, especially yes. when we're promising a mining and haven't delivered mining. So, yes, the, the poo poo plant might be a quite a few years down the road, so. Okay. I, I think the, the one thing that I, I, one of the things I had asked about was having uh, Nancy come attend one of our meetings here in the near future. I, I think it's important that we start bringing the full uh, Parks and Trails Advisory Board up to speed on what's going on here. Okay. And start looking at the different things. So I think Sarah, if you could send out this, the kind of the, the graphics and things that we're getting, that would be very helpful. Yeah, I'll do that. And I know originally, according to the original schedule, we should probably be winding down about now as far as the, the overall project goes. Of course, COVID threw a giant monkey wrench into that and basically made us hit the pause button for a number of months right in the middle of the, the process to figure out how to restart everything and, and gather feedback and input. So that's put us further behind, but my sense is that we're getting down to where the, the real nitty gritty of the recommendations are gonna be coming out. And I think at this point, it's important that we start bringing the, the full board along into that process as opposed to just, you know, doing a, a monthly update kind of thing. And uh, I think the best way to start that would be to maybe have Nancy attend one of our meetings. Especially and, with new park board members coming on, really getting yeah. them to see. Yeah. Well, so, Don, maybe you and I can talk about the timing of that because there's some things in terms of bringing along new board members in general. Yes. We've had a brief discussion about that, but maybe we could do a little strategizing. I would like uh, to do that. I think the ahead. other thing that, that I feel badly about are the ones who have committed to this process and are leaving yes. the board. And I would like to invite those folks to, you know, Susan and, and Michael and Kathleen to, to not be strangers about it. And when we do yes. have that presentation, um, I would like to extend of Sarah extend an invitation to you guys so you get a link and can you know kind of clog in I, I would welcome your input as part of that process and uh, even though you wouldn't necessarily be voting members at that point it should be nice to have some ex officio contact to, to kind of share some of your ideas along that way I think you've earned that and deserve that opportunity for a special amount of input there that's yeah, I've better than I really had to say about the process at this point. Any questions? No? Well, in that case, uh, let's move down to the uh, revised final weed and invasive plant management draft policy. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at it? Michael, I saw a whole lot of shells put in there. Yeah. Uh, the policy at the beginning still says that pesticides are not used in the park and that's not correct pesticides are used in the park because it herbicides say, are pesticides it says it should say pesticides other than herbicides are not okay. used in the park. right pesticide is a general term herbicide yeah. is a specific term pesticide is right everything from rodicide to herbicide to 
Monster. Exactly. Oh man, I but missed our, that. <laughs> yeah, but our pesticide policy can't start with saying we don't use any pesticides. <laughs> then we don't need a policy. <laughs> All right, I will fix that. Thank right you, here. sir. I think it's other comment. We can make it. I I uh, still agree with Lori. It would be, in a perfect world. It would be good to not have any. And especially sometimes I sit at the sandbox with my son. And if I'm sitting out away from, facing away from the, the big toy or whatever, your feet are sitting in the pesticide track along bordering the border of the, of the, of the uh, sandbox. So, you know, I mean, not ideal. Not ideal. Maybe someday something more cost efficient, time efficient to replace that. Hopefully sooner than later. I did Long try to... Um... I, sorry, I did try to, and I can word it more strongly if you want me to, but in the staff draft staff report that will go to council, I did try to make the point that this really was a starting point and that, you know, there's a, a bigger goal in terms of this. Um, but I think this is a good start to have something um, in writing and is an adopted policy, both for the public's understanding and also as a starting point. I don't think you have to see this as the end of the road on this issue. I agree. Yeah, progress, most progress is made incrementally, and this is a good first increment. This all came up because we had complaints, both from our some of our members and from other people, Let's put this and let's have the council put this into effect and let's see if we if that solves the problem or we continue to have complaints. If there are continued complaints, we'll need a stronger policy. I think uh, before we can do that, we have to have a, a motion recommending adoption of this. And yes. I would really, really appreciate it if Michael or Susan would make that motion. Whichever one doesn't make the motion, if they would make that second. I think that'd be a good thing. Susan, you have the honors. I don't, I don't make motions. No, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I will move that we recommend this policy as presented to us, to the council. With that change in pesticide? With that change in pesticide. Okay. And okay. Susan, will you make a second? I'm seconding. Thank you very much. Any discussion? I don't see any, so all those in favor. Let me oh. ask, Makota, Makota, you mentioned something about the sandboxes are getting sprayed or near? Uh, the borders of the sandboxes, I believe, get sprayed on the out exterior borders. Hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. because they can't weed whack, to weed whack the whole thing or whatever. It's, you know. Including the defined border of the play area. That hopefully. Will Hopefully that, that clears that up. Yeah, that should help that process. So, and again, thank you, Susan and Michael, for bringing this forward and you know patiently um, encouraging and insisting that we do something about it. It was really your leadership that kind of got us here. So, good job. Alrighty. So, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I don't see any. Let it be noted that it was unanimously recommended. Unanimous. All righty, which takes us down to item number eight, staff updates. Um, I don't have any updates. I think next on the agenda, Don, if I'm right, is just talking about our, um, our board members who will be leaving us. Is that what you have, I believe, next on the agenda? That is what I have next okay. on the agenda. So if there, oh, Kathleen did want to discuss before we get to that. She did add something oh, to the agenda. Mm -hmm. And I, I did um, have some time to reflect on that during the meeting. You had a meeting, you discussed it, but I don't believe there was any formal motion or recommendation made with regard to um, the Parks Board recommendation for planning for more permanent restrooms or porta potties or what it is you want to discuss. I, I'm not sure I even remember it. So Kathleen, can you enlighten us? 
Well, I think we were trying to kind of um, identify, you know, a, a conceptual policy about, you know, where we put toy bathrooms in parks. And of course, you know, that's, toilets are always kind of one of your, on your any survey, toilets are gonna be out there uh, pretty high up on the list as some of you know. So, um, and the question becomes, you know, when you have a neighborhood park that conceivably people have, you know, can easily walk home to use the bathroom, you know, and, and the cost and expense of actually not only building the toilets, but then having them cleaned all the time and opening them and closing them and not making sure homeless aren't in them and all that, you know, it's a, it's a big issue. And so, you know, kind of what's our policy. And I think what we came out of that discussion, if I, I remember, and I, is that, you know, if, if it's an area where there's like a, um, the, splash pad or something where there are people are there for a sustained long period of time like a um, destination feature destination feature um that would encourage us to have a toilet there um um escape you know and, and so so that was kind of going forward in future parks that was kind of our guy our guidance that we wanted to provide to the um consultants but there's also kind of the existing parks that we have already, and we have, you know, we have supplemented parks with seasonal portable toilets. And um, while I think that they could be improved in how they look by having some, a little, you know, nicer surround, uh, you know, three-sided surround around them so they do look nicer, I, they're a great way to, you know, meet the need and in an efficient and an effective and manner that doesn't cost too much because we can, con you know, the contractor pays, comes out and services them and cleans them and all that. Um, but I think what we, you know, the question I have for tonight is kind of, my understanding is we have one seasonally in Sandy Bluff and at Bornstead and at the skate park. Are there any, is there one at um, Knollwood? No. Um, is there one anywhere? Mining. Well, Mining, Mining. has Oh, right, the, but they they have a porta potty there too. Oh, the Fantasy Forest has the part porta potty. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. And actually, we did. You know, our original mining plan has has we have a set of. Sorry. Well, I guess we know where we stand in the, the hierarchy there. Sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, uh, Fantasy Forest, right? Is there so that's four four existing parks? Is there any other existing parks that are, that already have them? And are we okay with that kind of a coverage going for recommending that to the consultants going forward? I I agree with you that we should have some kind of a. Uh, enclosure for a couple of reasons one is it makes it look a little bit nicer um it also provides security that's a little bit harder to tip them over so yeah. that, that is a nice part of it i would like to see the one at bornstead someday be a real bathroom as opposed to a, a seasonal porta potty but i think that might you know maybe that's in conjunction with the next phase of park development or something that mm -hmm. i could come up in um i think okay. that it's I, I was gonna it, sorry. I, I was gonna say I think it's fair to to provide that kind of input to, uh, for the master plan. That that uh, you know we set a criteria that says if, like you said, if it's a feature that's gonna encourage people to stay for longer than a little while, that we provide those types of facilities for people, lest we have accidents and messes out in the bushes out there. So I think that that's a, a reasonable thing to do also. What were you going to say, Sarah? Well, I was going to say, I believe that um, it may have been your idea, Don, or somebody else the last time you guys discussed this, is that the uh, restroom at Bornstedt could be connected to the house. There could be yeah. a separate entrance. The plumbing's there. Everything's there. So the infrastructure exists, and that might be an inexpensive way to install something there. I can't remember yeah, whose think, idea that was, but it was a good idea, I, I thought. I think I had suggested that you utilize the garage for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we also have um, a set of plans for an additional toilet and I think a, 
a shelter, picnic shelter, over by Fantasy Forest um, already. That, um, you know, making that a more a flushable toilet would be, I think, appropriate given the amount of use that park gets. Yeah. You know? So, um, okay. And then, you know, the question comes in like, okay, we got one at the skate park, right? But then we also put one over by the sports field up there on the community campus. Is that? No, it's one in the same. Okay, and sure. we didn't, um, I don't, I'm, try, I'm not sure we placed one this year over at the skate park. Um, I'm trying to remember. There was discussion about it, right? Yeah, I think we eliminated that one this year, um, partly because of the COVID requirements. It was pretty expensive. We had to have them come out and clean them every day. So we made a determination and prioritized Bluff and Bornstedt um, and didn't put one at the skate park. And, you know, one of the things about that is that the park gets a lot of use by the youth um, sports organizations and they do it on a first come first serve so they're not reserving it through us so we're not collecting fees we have a fee structure and if they want to guarantee use they can reserve it um, but nobody has done that they've kind of done it on a first come first serve they show up and they want to practice with their soccer team or their baseball team they do that but they're always requesting a restroom but we're not collecting fees from them to help cover those costs so I think that that's sort of a an issue because they are expensive they're not inexpensive to supply and that's kind of where I think you know once we improve the park for sports fields and all um, and you know put in the restroom I, I would say that we do need to start charging them to use it user pays yeah. and um, especially if they want you know irrigation and and porta potties and that kind of thing we need to be able to have a funding source to help offset those costs yeah, and there's no question about that. I think the issue now is that, you know, not wanting to take on the maintenance and the irrigation and everything until that it's been improved because it's just going to be an ongoing, um, you know, probably one issue after another because it's just not, you know, up to up to speed. Um, but certainly once it's developed, there's no question it's going to also be in higher demand. So, you know, the first come first serve isn't going to work. And the whole premise behind that was you could go to any park, you know, it's the same thing happens at Bluff, same thing happens at Bornstead, the church um, lots and grassy areas get used for team practices. So it's kind of like any other park in the city right now, you can show up and put up cones and practice with your little soccer team, you know, and that's how we're treating that area right now. Um, but if anybody did want to reserve it and guarantee it, we do have something in place, a fee structure in place. Right. So what I heard was that, you know, we would like to have permanent toilets in the future for Fantasy Forest and Bornstead and a three-sided structure for porta potties um, that we currently lay out and bluff and the skate park. Is that, is there any other need around the town that we know of? Dog park? Mm -hmm. uh, that's Sandy Bluff, yeah. Okay. Did you mention on the trail? There's not one on the trail uh, now. There's a lot of trail. You could put one at Knollwood if you wanted to, and that would service the trail, but I, it, it is, it's not inexpensive. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of trail. I, I kind of like how it's neat, natural. And again, we don't want to accommodate uh, whatever homeless problems there might be. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I know I've stopped and peed on Tickle Creek Trail more than, more than once a month, probably, so. Uh, uh, too, too much information, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, I, yeah, so, you know, I go walking in the morning after my coffee, and so and there isn't, uh, you know, yeah, so considering one somewhere along, like you said, at Nowood or something, you know. Might be a nice thing. Wouldn't be a bad thing, right. Okay. I would be comfortable so, with this. Do you want me to put this into a memo to send to the consultants and to Nancy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I may send it out for some just clarification once I write it, just make sure I've covered it. Sounds um, good. I'll do that ASAP. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other potty talk? <laughs> no? Okay, board member send off. Sarah, what do you got for yeah. us? Yeah, so um, I just, I want to um, 
I want to ask if we could um, collect one more time for just about 30 minutes to do this properly. Um, you know, we have three board members leaving who I, I figure um, between the three of you, there's somewhere between 40 and 50 years of, of volunteer time to this board. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I would like to send you off properly. And um, to be perfectly frank, I'm waiting on a little something. And so I would like to organize um, just a 30 minute Zoom um, so that we could say a proper thank you and um, show our appreciation and um, wrap it up that way. Could I, could I get some thumbs up for that possibility? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna settle on a, a date. I'm going to send it out and hopefully everybody can make it. Um, I have to wrap my hands around a few details and then I'll send it out and um, um, I'll look forward to that opportunity. I think that's terrific. Yeah. Thank you. I will prepare an interpretive dance, possibly. <laughs> oh, we're holding you to that now. <laughs> I really wish we could do it in person. Sure would be a lot nicer. Well, the dance would be better, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> you going to wear your jazz shoes? <laughs> yeah, I'm tapping right now, man. All righty. Well, any uh, other business? Uh, Lori Rapana smith thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Oh, she's muted. Okay. You're muted. Lori? You're welcome. I had to <laughs> look around and find the unmute. The unmute function. button. We, we, feel, we feel your pain. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you all. That was, it's been very informative. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, we will see you a little later in the month. Until then, have a safe, uh, safe journey forward. Good night. Thanks, guys. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.